Race fans, welcome to the 2023 National Gravity Championships right here at Ride Rock Creek in Zirconia, North Carolina, with coverage brought to you by the SRAM Downhill Southeast Race Replay Series. I'm your host, Rich Moore, teaming up with Will Washam, and on behalf of the entire crew, we want to welcome you all to this historic event. Southeast United States has become a fast-growing hotbed in the national gravity scene. And in its first year of operation, Ride Rock Creek has set the bar high. The park's founder and world champion downhill racer, Nico Malali, knows exactly what it takes to build a challenging track. And today's pro course stampede is stacked full of calculating features and heavy compressions that will test today's riders as they fight for coveted UCI points. Let's head over to get a quick rundown with Nico himself. Well, Nico, I know you and the crew have been hard at work preparing for this event. Tell us a little bit about the prep work you guys have done. Yeah, so a big part about acquiring this property for us with Rock Creek and the Ride Canuga Bike Parks is to have big events like this. Mm -hmm. So we're really fortunate to secure this for this year and next year. Building the track has been something that has been my passion. It's interesting because the track is completely manufactured. Every feature, every rock on the track was put there and it's hard to make it not ride like an obstacle course when you man make all of the technical sections. So I think I did a good job of making it ride natural, even though it isn't. Um, but the hill here is just kind of mellow or challenged for vert. So we wanted to make it as true of a test as possible if we're gonna award the national champion on this course. Well, starting at the top, we've got a two part rock garden leads us into this notorious log drop section. Tell us a little bit about that. Any tweaks you've made, any places you've kind of tightened the lineup. Uh, to make the course a little bit more challenging for our racers this weekend. Yeah, so just in general, the whole way down, I put a lot of ski poles in that are breakaway poles to define the line. Just in the normal weekend, a lot of people just take the main line, the easy line develops. So pinching it off just makes people have to think. And it kind of developed two lines almost the whole way down the track, which is super cool. Specifically to that first section, I think the first rock garden, the more speed you can carry into it, the better you're going to be. You just stay on top of the rocks instead of falling in the holes. And then when you come around the turn and off the log drop, that's all about exit speed because you go up a hill and across a flat section after that. There's a lot of compressions, a lot of heavy hits starting at the top there. But those carry on down the track, especially in the middle section. We've got a notorious spot coming out towards the red gates where there's kind of a, a compression. The last race we saw here, we saw people were kind of pulling, jumping over that, gapping over that but that's changed. Yeah, so the last race, Asa did a 158, and I really wanted the time to be over two minutes to be a true downhill test. Mm -hmm. So we tried to make it a little longer without making it tight and janky. And that just means running the track out and up around instead of straight down the fall line. So right there, we made a sweeping turn into a staircase rock garden that just added some distance to the track. I think it created some line options out of, out of that time like we were looking for. Immediately after, we get into a more flowy section of the trail got a lot of berms, jumps. What do you think is gonna be the key to that section? Yeah, I think there's a lot of time in that bottom section. It's uh, pretty straightforward, there's a lot of berms, but the speed you're carrying, if you can just be really sharp on your marks and not slide, not push the tires, but carry exit speed through all those turns, carry momentum, there's a lot of time to be had. Especially coming out to the last jump, there's a couple poles that make it tighter, and if you can jump that, those features without having to pop too high and stay low and carry good drive, it can mean a second or two and, and that's going to be huge on this track. It's such a short race that times will be tight. Yeah, excited to see the results today. Definitely excited to have you back out on track. It's a great return here at your home turf and uh, wish you all the luck today. Yeah, thanks man. I'm stoked to be back on the bike. You guys start somewhere. For qualifying, the dirt was tacky and the track was fast. Let's go check in with Will Washam to see how the field is stacking up. All right, we're down here at the finish line with Trill Will. Will, how have things been looking down here this weekend, and how are the riders getting themselves prepped for the finals today? Well, it's been a long week. We've been practicing on this track since Thursday, now it's Sunday. So these riders have had four days to get their lines dialed, and it's been mixed conditions. We've seen thunderstorms nearly every day. The track's getting wet, it's drying out, and we got some really challenging features, including this last big step up that riders have had to contend with. But they're ready for finals today. It's time to see who's got it for a national championship. We've got a really interesting women's field this year. We've got two U.S. riders that are based in Europe, Anna Newkirk and Abby Hoagie, that have a World Cup team beyond racing, and they are here to contend for the national championship. Abby was actually here last year. She was second place by a half a second, 
So those two girls are hungry. Anna actually qualified in first yesterday by eight seconds over Kaylee Skelton, our two-time defending national champion. All right, well, I'm excited to see how things shake out. Let's go racing. Let's do it. Well, we will start the show with Amelia Capuano out of Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania. She qualified in fifth place yesterday. It was a 252.14 for Capuano. Yeah. And she's going to be our first rider. We get to see tackle this stampede racetrack at Ride Rock Creek. And as you can see, it's full gas right from the top. A couple technical rock sections lead you into one of the steepest, most technical areas of the track. And the compressions have already begun. He saw Capuano have a pretty hard landing there off the long drop. That slanted log is a little more technical than it looks here on screen. It's a little deceiving. If it's got any moisture, it's going to be really slippery. Although it does look like we're drying out significantly from what we saw this morning. And Amelia is going to make her way down this signature finishing section at Rock Creek. A huge step up brings riders to the finish line. And Capuano will break the beam. She'll start us off with a 240. So she's going to drop 10 seconds. And Ella Erickson will be up next. She's out of Hayden, Idaho with a 246.59. Erickson's got some history here at the National Championships. She's been in the top five each of the last two years. The cheeky inside right there on the top of this track. Erickson makes her way around that off camber right hand, turn into this steep technical bit right through the inside. It's actually a really key section because it, it's flat a little bit right there after you come through that compression and Erickson looks to be carrying pretty good speed that time she put down yesterday six seconds slower than we what we just saw from Amelia Capuano and she goes on the inside of that log right there so that'll cost her a bit of time and as I said Erickson was on the podium in 2021 was fourth in 2022 here at national championships so she's been a regular at the top of the women's field the past few years in elite Erickson setting up wide here into the left-hand turn and a deceptive amount of pedaling here on this track. There's a good bit of sprinting here and there in and out of some of these sections. But of course, no pedaling necessary here on the finish straight. And Erickson going to opt to kind of squash that last jump. It's a huge committed move and it's a 244 for Ella Erickson. She'll go into second place, 3.72 behind Capuano as we see the line Erickson chose here into this big log drop. And it was a smooth run for her, but we're in to our top three. This is Abby Hoagie. She's at a Heidelberg, Germany, the American citizen living over in Europe and part of the Beyond Racing program. Abby came out to national championships last year and she was less than a second off the win. She was our silver medalist, so she's come back hungry to North Carolina this year. Some tidy work up top for Abby Hoagie. Nice and smooth there off the drop. Abby's going to be fired up after a bronze medal performance in dual slalom earlier this week. So she's been getting after it. Plenty of bike racing to go around. Very nice line there off the log and able to square up that left-hander. And some big hits right there on the devil's staircase on the Stampede Racetrack. Abby going to grab a couple more pedals. Oh, and taking it inside right along that pole. And yeah, this is where some of the physical hits on this track are going to start to add up. And we'll see what Hoagie can put together here when she hits the finish line. She's made it through all the technical bits of the track. The Beyond Racing rider, our silver medalist last year, goes 238. 
So 1.98 into the green for Abby Hoagie. She's dropped four seconds off that seating time. And we'll see if that's good enough to keep her in medal contention this year. Kaylee Skelton is our next rider. Speaking of medals, your two-time defending national champion out of San Marcos, California. It was a 236 for Skelton in qualifying yesterday. The KHS factory rider means business out of the gate. And making quick work of this top rock section. Tidy on the inside line right there as well on the right-hander. Oh, and the pace is there for Skelton at the top of this track. Yes, once Skelton took that national championship in 2021, she's really been dominating all the domestic pro downhill races, essentially winning every race she's entered. Also won the Tennessee National earlier this year. Just a couple blemishes on her resume, but she has been perfect at national championships the past couple years, and the pace that she carried off that drop is immense. Did not mess about, went straight to the inside line there. Sets up beautifully for that corner. Oh, and a bit of a scrub there off the roller. Skelton's holding great pace on the bottom of this track, and surely she's gonna let it fly on this bottom jump. Skelton boosts the final step up and she will cross the line with a 229, 9.17 into the green and a full seven seconds faster than her qualifying yesterday. And that leaves us with just one rider remaining at the top. Skelton was perfect over that log. That rider left at the top is Anna Newkirk. She's out of Switzerland, based there, managing the Beyond Racing team. Teammates with Abby Hoagie, and she is ready to throw down for the national championships. I know this has been on Anna's radar for quite a number of years, and she's here at Rock Creek to try to make some magic happen. Yeah, Newkirk really fast there on the outside. Hook it up well in that off-camber corner. And so composed there off the drop. This is looking good so far. Whipped it on that left-hand corner. That was the fastest we've seen in that section so far. Newkirk's a rider that's going to be able to push through all these big hits, and she's on the inside there. So she stays out of that rut, able to stay high after that log feature. She has been doing work on the World Cup, really been the top American racing on the World Cup ever since she was a junior, had some great junior results, and she was 10th place this year in elite at round number one in Linzer Haida. And she's been up to pace here at Rock Creek. That 228 in qualifying was a blistering run. And I haven't seen anything wrong from where I'm sat, so this very well could be a winning run from Newkirk as she's going to make it up and over that knuckle. Anna Newkirk charging to the finish, and she is going to win this national championship. It's a 225.34, four seconds clear of Kaylee Skelton in second place. And Anna Newkirk with a committed ride here at Rock Creek to take the national championship. Congratulations. She will be flying that Stars and Stripes on her jersey at the World Cup. Kaylee Skelton second, and Kale Cushman will end up third in our elite class. Well, we're here with our 2023 Downhill National Champion and Elite Women, Anna Newkirk. How does it feel now that you've got the jersey on and you're gonna have to order some more jerseys for the World Cup with the new sleeve? Yeah, I know, um, I'm super stoked. Yeah, I'm really, really excited to have been able to take the jersey. Um, it was no easy battle for sure. Like all the girls were going super fast, but um, yeah, I'm really stoked. Were there any particular sections that were challenging this week that you were working through trying to dial in a line? All of them, um, especially the part before the bridge. So where you jump over that log, that section was super tricky. Um, this track actually has a lot of pedaling sections in it. And when you're not pedaling, there's a lot of big compressions. Um, it's super technical, so you have to stay really focused as well. So it's a very all out track. Well, we can't wait to watch you on the World Cup circuit wearing this new sleeve. Anna, congratulations. Thank you so much, Will.
All right, well, the men's field was looking pretty tight and exciting yesterday. Give us a full rundown on that. Yeah, it was. And we've got Nico Malali back in the mix. He qualified in eighth yesterday, just five seconds off the pace of Dakota Norton. Tyler Irvin was in seventh. Richie Rude back on the downhill bike. He's on a prototype Yeti this weekend. He qualified in sixth. And that top five is looking devastatingly fast. They're all World Cup regulars. Chris Grice was in fifth. Austin Dooley and Dante Silva were right beside each other in third and fourth, just a tenth of a second off each other. And then Lucas Shaw is lurking in second place. He was a half second off the pace set by Dakota Norton. So these boys are ready to give it for racing today. Well, Dylan Maples will start us off as our hot seat rider. He put down a 212.9 in qualifying. Maples with a silky smooth style on the bike. Let's see how he made sense of this track at Rock Creek. Just flowed through that upper rock section. I can assure you folks, it is not that smooth. Yeah, Maples making this look really easy today. These riders will be loving the conditions they've got for racing. That turn has been getting a little loose all week. That low rut started to get blown out. You can see Maples trying to stay above that. Dylan trying to break into the World Cup and he had a 38th place at Val de Sol round number three. So almost making that top 30 final session. And you can see why. I mean, he is just nailing all his marks. Rarely breaking any traction. And that's why he's sat in the hot seat right now. Beautiful over that step up. Dylan Maples. Yeah, he put down a 206.83. So that's a solid six seconds faster than he was on seating. And here is our first rider in the top eights, Nico Malali. At Episcopal Forest, North Carolina, the Frameworks rider is back in action. Yeah, he was chomping at the bit to be able to be on his bike this week. You know, he says he's got no expectations, but I know Nico. And when he saw he was only five seconds back in qualifying, he's going to try to put one down today. Uh, yes, it's almost like he knows where those rocks are placed. That was beautiful. Malali's been trading lines with young Asa Vermette all week. We saw him win his class earlier today in the 15-16 race. That was Nico just catching all the backside he can, generating momentum. You know, not that many results to write home about this year. Nico was second at round number one of Downhill Southeast, but unfortunately been off the bike. And he's only been back on for a week or so with the downhill rig. Oh, and he's been on point on this run, pre-hopping that roller. He's not holding anything back. The two-time elite U.S. national champ is trying to lay one down and shake it up today. What will it be for Malali here on the track that he built at Ride Rock Creek? It's a 210. So he was able to drop some time, dropped about one and a half seconds from his qualifying, but he's still three seconds back as we take a look at this nice inside, pushes down over the rock drop, hooks up in this beautiful North Carolina dirt. We'll roll on to Tyler Irvin, qualified with a 211.23. Irvin with a shy smile on his face today for the national championship finals at Rock Creek. He has been doing some racing over in this part of the country this season in addition to traveling overseas. Now he's got his line super dialed there, just hooking up on the right-hander. Oh, able to pre-hop a little bit before that log drop. He was seventh here earlier in the season at Downhill Southeast. Sixth at the Tennessee National. Takes that left foot out for a little extra traction on that off camber turn. And just sends it straight over those steps to flat. 
I know Irvin's been looking for a breakout ride. He's a guy that's really right there, close to the pace of the top U.S. riders. That's why he qualified in seventh. But we've yet to see him break out and establish himself on the domestic podiums. Well, here is Irvin. He's charging down to the finish line. Looks like he got a little ET crank in there, maybe to get into a good gear for the finish sprint. Tyler will break the beam, 207.51, so just outside that time that is currently held by Dylan Maples. And here's Irvin dropping into one of the steeper bits of the track off that bridge, just tagging that last step. And we are looking at Richie Rude out of Redding, Connecticut. 210.86 was his qualifying run. A man that has had so much success in multiple disciplines of gravity cycling, and he's here racing downhill at the national championships. No, yeah. oh, and Rude just bulldozed that inside line. There's kind of a rhythm there, but Richie didn't really bother pulling up at all. Oh, and slid it right there into the rut, running wide. And he's been on fire this year, back to his absolute best. He is leading the Enduro World Cup standings. Yeah, Richie keeping it smooth in this section. And he's going to go outside. He's going to rail that rut. Oh, just tip taps on those stairs as Rude makes his way into this steep shoot. And he will go outside line again. So Richie has been nailing these outsides, carrying pace down the track here at Rock Creek. The winner of the first round of the Enduro World Cup this year. Of course, the junior world champion in downhill. So what can Rude do to shake up the podium today as he charges over that step up? Richie Rude goes fastest. It's a 2.06 flat for Richie Rude into the hot seat by nearly a second. And he's dropped over four seconds from his qualifying. So a pinned run from Richie Rude. And speaking of pinned, young Chris Grice from Hendersonville, North Carolina, right down the street. He is fired up and ready to show the world what he can do. Grice, a man that has been on an absolute mission the past few years, rips that outside corner. Grice trying to establish himself as one of the top downhill racers in the U.S. He's been in the senior ranks for a couple of years now. Took a win earlier this year domestically at the Trials Training Center downhill southeast round, and he is sailing off those drops. Yeah, he's got such a low center of gravity on the bike. So much traction created. Wow. Oh, and Grice is going to gap off that bridge and completely send that to flat. So Chris on one right here today at Ride Rock Creek for the national championships. Anchors up off that flat corner. And he's inside again. Well, what can Grice do on the results page today? He certainly has a pedigree with multiple junior national titles to his name. Grice crosses just outside that time of Richie Rude. It's a 206.54. He's into second place. And we are into our top four riders next as we see Grice just putting together some flow where it seems like there's none to be found. And here's Austin Dooley, fourth place yesterday in qualifying, a 208.92. So we've seen that time go way by as Rude is a 206 flat on the hot seat currently. Dooley riding for the Common Salt Schwalbe World Cup outfit. Oh, yeah, just straight over those little obstacles. That's all they look like when these pros are riding them. I can assure you they're pretty significant in person. Oh, and he's the first rider we've seen go over that rock. So he goes inside into this section trying to cut off a little length of this track on Rock Creek. 
Oh, I like what I'm seeing from Dooley. Very confident ride, just letting the back end slide out through that corner. Took the win at Windrock earlier this year. As you can see, Dooley finding traction on that inside line. Not going to hang about on that devil's staircase. Dooley, a rider that has really come into his own the past couple World Cup seasons, and he's got a nice national championships pedigree with two consecutive bronze medals in elite. Oh, Dooley on all the good lines on this run. Surely he's put down a heater. Time to beat is a 2.06 flat by Richie Rude. Dooley hammer into the line. And it's 205.88, so 12 hundredths into the green. This is incredibly tight racing. And he needed all of those precise lines to overtake Richie Rude. And another young pro that's really been making his mark here the past couple years is Dante Silva from Chula Vista, California. Riding from the Canyon Collective, he's all smiles. He's getting the locals' treatment from his teammate Lucas Shaw here in North Carolina. Silva, another man that is absolutely hungry to do something big today. You can see the fans. They thought it was Luca. He's just that fast. Oh, and he scrubs that drop. Yeah, Silva's going to love a lot of these features here at Ride Rock Creek. Really lets him excel with this precise riding. Clean over that log. Oh yeah, super smooth on that section and Silva right back to the pedals. Oh, just surfing that rut, clipped out to make sure he got that smooth and he's right on the inside. Silva almost looks like to be a picture perfect run here for the national championships. Dante setting up for this final finish straight. Pushing through that step up, winds it up. Dante Silva will cross. It's a 205.97, goes into second place just outside that time. Set by Austin Dooley. You can see the precision in his riding straight to that rut. And here is our second to last rider, second fastest qualifier. It's Luca Shaw riding for the Canyon Collective from Pisgah Forest. He's got a confident look about him this week. Able to be here with his family and friends, and Shaw is looking for nothing less than a win today. We've already seen that qualifying time by Dakota Norton go by as Shaw just gaps huge into that rock section, and that's the farthest inside we've seen anyone today. Oh, he's timing this up absolutely perfect and went huge on the drop. Nice and composed on those back-to-back -back corners. We've got some interesting taping here at Rock Creek, creating some awkward turns. Yeah, he's going to stay out of that rut. Actually, everyone stayed out of that rut except for Richie Rude as Shaw gaps down into this section. Well, he's had a good season so far. Fifth place at Leah Gang in the World Cup. Oh, and just perfectly tidy, threading that inside line right by the pole. Shaw's going to pull up, tug, get some backside into that corner. And it's just the finish straight now for Lucas Shaw. He has never won a national title in his eight elite seasons. All the while being one of the top American riders, Shaw comes down to the line, and it's a 205.18. Shaw goes fastest by seven-tenths of a second. What a run right there from Lucas Shaw. You can see he gapped the entire downside of that bridge, letting the tires slide, hook up right before these stairs. And we are down to our final rider in Elite Men, and it's none other than Dakota Norton from Clinton, Tennessee. That is the stare of a two-time defending national champion. Norton is staring a th potential three-peat right in the face as he drops in here at Rock Creek. 
A top 10 already on the World Cup this season for Norton. Convincing wins at the two national rounds this year, and he gaps off that. Whoa! I think that was a burp tire. Not sure if that was just the knobs or if he lost a little air pressure, but that was a huge pre-jump gap over that drop. And leave it to Dakota Norton to find a wild and crazy line on a track that we surely thought everyone had figured out already. And Norton is cracking on it. Sounds like I heard a hard impact on that devil's staircase, but Dakota is still giving it everything he's got. Oh, and he's loose. There is definitely low pressure in that tire. Will Ken Dak pull some magic out? He's still got pace. Well, Norton still carrying the pace down here to the finish line. We don't have any splits. Have no clue what this is going to be. He still managed to hold on to a wild ride as Norton comes to the line. Dakota crosses the line at 206.65, and that means Lucas Shaw will be your national champion in 2023. Norton's going to slot into sixth place as we look back up at this wild ride from Dakota Norton. Only rider we saw do that line. And yeah, I actually don't know if he burped that much air right there. It looked like a dirt spray, but hey, he held on to it. He will pass that jersey off to this man, Luca Shaw, your 2023 United States downhill champion for elite men. Austin Dooley in second place and Dante Silva, your bronze medalist. Well, I'm here with our newly crowned 2023 downhill national champion for elite men, Luca Shaw. Luca, you've been soaking it in with friends and family. How are you, man? I'm good. Yeah, this is uh, this is a good day. <laughs> it's just so happy to make it happen. Uh, the pressure was on with it being so close to home, and yeah, all my friends and family here. So yeah, everyone was going quick. Like the times were so close. I just looked at the results now, and I uh, I didn't have much breathing room. So, um, but yeah, it doesn't matter. I got it done. So, we'll talk about the field that we had today. We got folks like Austin Dooley, Dante Silva, Ryan Pinkerton that are right there. What have you seen developing uh, over the past couple of years? Yeah, I mean the kids are the kids are fast, and the old guys are you know hanging in there. I feel like I'm one of the old guys now, but uh, but yeah, and I mean it's a pretty short track, so I knew the times would be close, um, especially with pretty perfect conditions. Um, so yeah, everyone's flying, and you have to be you have to be on it. So um, yeah, just keep the head down, keep charging all the way. So that's what I tried to do, and um, yeah, I think that that experience paid off for me today. We're so stoked it did. How will it feel with that sleeve on your jersey as you head to that next World Cup? Because it's been a long time coming, and you're going to be that guy carrying the flag. Yeah, I mean, I'm definitely going to be pretty proud. But I have to say my master plan is that I never wear it because next race is World Champs. So if things go really well, I'll have some rainbows over top of it. But uh, that's, yeah. Either way, I'll be happy. <laughs> well, we really like that master plan. We can't wait to watch what happens in Scotland. And we're going to let you get back to the celebrations. This is Lucas Shaw, your 2023 Elite Men's Downhill National Champion. Ladies and gentlemen, that was another exciting day of racing here at Ride Rock Creek. Thank you all for joining us at this incredible venue and for supporting US Downhill. Join us back here again in just two weeks for the final stop of the Downhill Southeast Series at Sugar Mountain in the high country of North Carolina.